didn't really catch on, and like all these other things. We haven't talked much about, um, and I think this is what relates to the intergenerational question. How to be a person who does life with other adults that we're not related to in a healthy, sustained way over the long haul. Um, does anyone have experience with formation in that vein within the Catholic Organ Movement? Other than just living it? Other than, other than just trial and error. Yeah. No, like when you said healthy, you know, that just... <laughs> <laughs> Not in your vocabulary. No, nothing, nothing that, nothing <laughs> that <laughs> probably applies at all. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. <laughs> and is that, does that belong in the Catholic Worker Movement? Do you think that St. Louis sometimes tries to broach that? I mean, I'm not familiar necessarily, I and mean, I don't really hang out in St. Louis very often, but when I think about, you know, some of the intense counseling and all the other kind of stuff that they do. Um, I wonder if they, that's stuff that they experiment with. I mean, they, first of all, Karen House has been around a really long time, and it seems like they've had a lot of different influxes of folks, and then kind of like with the, um, I mean, so the Karen House community, and then like the Carl Cabot House, and all the, like the squatting that happened, and then the co-housing. I mean, they had a lot of stuff that they were doing. And I think that there was some intentionality um, in terms of trying to how to deal with these relationships. Now, then you said the word healthy, and I'm not sure, you know, how that all. I, you know, looking from the looking from the outside, you know, we're all kind of broken people, and we're trying to find our way through this broken world, and trying to be whole. It's and then you know, like if you look at like the tradition of the Eucharist, you're. I mean, Jesus broke his body, literally and figuratively, uh -huh. broke it to give it away. And and so that's what we're being asked to do if we're going to follow that particular tradition. Does that particular tradition make or break a Catholic worker? No, I don't think so. I don't, not, not in, like, this is the Catholic formation of being a Catholic. Like, no, I don't think that makes a Catholic worker. Yeah. That's really insightful. That Thank you. Because... <laughs> Like I'm just, I'm like almost hit my head in the, the wall trying to figure out like, Dorothy, Daddy, you're so smart. Why couldn't you figure out how to like form a healthy community? Like this is mind boggling. Maybe biology. Yeah. Maybe biology. Yeah. But, yeah. but, but I gotta read that one. The Kate Hennessy one. one. You gotta read it. Yeah. But maybe she saw the struggle of living with others as just like one manifestation of the cross mm -hmm. in this life, yes. and therefore wasn't very concerned with creating a flourishing interrelationship and community. Right. Maybe that wasn't, because she was like very long game, like, well, <laughs> heaven is what we're going for, so we can stop, like, right. we don't oh, really need to wait worry heaven about heaven is heaven. Yeah. Was it? I'm, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, look at Jesus, look at Jesus' ragtag group. How healthy were they? Yeah. Here's Peter turning his back on the guy. Right. I don't know how many times. But then what did the early church do? They like set up structures and. Yeah, you know, but and then when the government came down on them, when the empire came down on them, they conformed yeah. to the state yeah. because they didn't have the depth of maybe they didn't have the depth of spirit. Maybe that was the only way they could figure out how to survive. I don't know why they did what they did. You know. Yeah, I, I think. I, oh, sorry. sorry uh, go ahead. What, what I I think part. I mean, I'm no great. Catholic worker connoisseur, and I've read plenty of books and whatnot. But I mean, given the context of the art today and the times, and uh, you know, when uh, uh, what's the name? Um, the two, the, the the two Italians who were hung, killed Sacco, later, Sacco, uh, Sacco, Sacco, Sacco and Vanzetti. I mean, they were anarchists, and that whole Catholic worker was influenced extensively by anarchism. And if you put that into con context, mm -hmm. then you make a little room or a little window and say, yeah, every community member can be at times a pain in the butt, or ev every community member can be sometimes an asshole, you know. So, you know, that's how it goes, you know, nobody's perfect, so you have to give, take, try to make, go forward. You know?
But it's got to, it's important, I think, to put in some structure in order to create or help create more help. I mean, I, I, you know, yeah. Dorothy didn't give. It's a good idea. Yeah, did, she didn't give community a lot of time. I, mean, I don't know that that was her focus. Though. Right. Yeah. I mean, but I think it's that's interesting. Don't you think? I mean, like, yeah, I no, and I think that's I mean, I read her writings and I look at, you know, it's like aims and means, and it really is like. We're talking works of mercy mostly here, and 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 practice of faith. Your community, it's more like well they should just ship, shape up and get their shit together. She was on the road. I mean, I mean, what I'm saying, like I don't think she I think it was, yeah. I think it was more like you know, like this is what you just kind of like okay, I'm gonna put up with you all, but this is the work I'm doing, and if you want to come along, great. And if you don't want to come along, that's right. that's kind of you know you got to figure it out. And I think like what yeah. we're talking about to some degree in terms of like when you brought up the intergenerationality and some of the questions that you brought up, it's like it is interesting to me that there are issues now that we are dealing with that you know I okay when I was younger and traveling and I had the occasion to like hang out with the East Coast Catholic workers, I remember just thinking like. Wow, y'all need to chillax, man. Y'all are intense and uptight, and you quote Dorothy way too much. I mean, they really. <laughs> Holy man, but that's the East dying. Coast. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> I just remember, you know, like going to a worker gathering, and Sher Sher for, uh, Schaefer Duffy is sort of like, it's 7 a.m. Why isn't everybody up and, like, you know, doing breakfast and having prayers? And, like, we need to get onto our round tables. And I'm looking at her like, Man, Carmen Trotta just like probably went to bed at four. <laughs> yeah. uh, those New York workers were like, <sighs> and they're like talking and, you know, smoking and, you know, I don't know. I mean, they were like, oh, well, well. I'm like, I don't think they're waking up at seven. Mm. And I'm looking at her going, we don't wake people up. She's like, I want to wake them up. I'm thinking like, whoa, wow. I mean, but you're but talking. That's actually something we were talking about this morning is the East Coast communities are much older. Yep. They're, they're not bringing in the younger tradition. The younger generation through this passing on of tradition, something's happening, and I think in the Midwest there's, a, there's been a lot more focus on how do we build healthy viable. Well, so that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. So when we're talking about this, it's so fascinating because so so some of us who've been around a long time, it's been it's interesting. Like what you were saying, you've been at these various stages of your life, the different people, and I'm saying similarly. I've never started a house, but I mean I have. We're kind of having this sort of like ad hoc Catholic worker situation near where we live, and I'm like pissed off about like dishes. I mean, I, you know, I'm like, I'm feeling a little convicted. But so, I think about what happened in California. Years ago, the, somebody in California wrote this whole thing about you really can't raise kids in a Catholic worker. And the whole Midwest was like, are you shit? <laughs> 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 Please, like, like, dude, like, he's like, dude, 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 man, you don't have to invent the flipping wheel. Like, East Coast people have been doing it, Midwest people have been doing it, and I'm sure there's some West Coast people, sheep ranch, I mean, you know, people have been doing it, like, it's just you and your neuroses, mm. but whatever. <laughs> You know, like, I mean, kind of, you know what I'm saying? Like, you really had to be, I mean, and there was a big uproar about it. I mean, I remember we had so many round tables here, and I think, did we write some big letter and, like, be like, I mean, I think Brian did. I mean, because we really were, like, are you kidding me? I mean, so you just have to know that there have been all these different, you know, like, and I'm sure, like, if you go to, like, the L.A. Catholic worker, you know, they've got the work hard, pray hard, party hard. You know what I mean? Like they do it, and that's how they do it. Versus, and I'm sure that they think they got the model. You know, I mean, if but they're, they don't have young people committing. I don't think they have. They have a regular influx, and they do more babies. Yeah. But most of those people go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. But and that's then, their purpose for the LA worker. The LA yeah, worker is a basically a summer yeah. school program. A summer school program. And yeah. yeah, and then people have gone. They planted the seed there. Yeah. Right. But that because they left there doesn't yeah. mean that they left the Catholic worker. No, no, right. They've gone no, no, and done other things. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, I just think that it's so you have to look at like so what is formation? I mean, because I guess like in that sense, LA Catholic worker has their their oh, yeah. their formation style. Yeah. I suppose it, there are other houses that have been long standing that you could look at as has that been like the, the you know the little starting seed bed that launched yeah. other places right so I think that there probably are mm -hmm. and um, and have been 
And I, I think that that's also like, okay, so but that's <coughs> got to be someone's intentionality because otherwise it wouldn't be happening. And they must see that as part of their powerism. Other folks, like I remember coming here very early on, and you know, I, I for sure thought I'd pick, you know, the best Catholic worker to live in because, you know, they were hardcore, <coughs> and that's what I wanted. Hardcore, that was, sign me up. So it was like, you know, I came here, and I remember listening to somebody from um, Casa Maria in, in Milwaukee, and she was bemoaning like all this stuff with her hospitality and all these other things. And I remember in my like very newbie, like I've only been a Catholic for maybe a year, thinking, make it work for you. <laughs> like what the heck? Like 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 there isn't some recipe book that says wear yourself out to exhaustion by serving 200 people before eight o'clock, and then do it again at noon, and then do it again at five, and don't ever do anything, you know, that's life sustaining for yourself. Just pour it all out. I mean, I remember this, this, this poor woman was exhausted. You know, and I don't think that she had a model or a sense that she could, like, scale back. Because yeah. we definitely, I mean, at our worker we, house, we had to have to do that. Then. Yeah. We, I mean, we were hardcore people on one hand, but on the other hand, you know, we'd be like, okay, we got forced fun, and, you know, you need to go away for a, a weekend. Yeah, you know? burn out. Yeah. What, I'm wondering what about you three. You know, I feel what yeah, we were really. going to say something, yeah. guys. start a house and there's like 10 most asked questions or something along those lines mm -hmm. and they and, and, it, and it really really will help you to like figure out how to form a house that's different than forming a Catholic worker okay because the work the Catholic worker is not the house the Catholic worker might be what you do and as a Catholic worker that's forming internally you're going to carry that out in that house but like, but like starting a house you're going to look What's the need in the community? That's one of the things they suggest. Look around, what's the need in the community? Can you fill that? Do you want to fill that? Um, what is the support, what's the extended community support that might be available to you? Do you have that? Do you know who they are? Like these are things that you can do to form a house. But still, that's not forming the, the deeper, like that's a, that's, a, it, it works more together. sustainable in a lot of ways anyway. Yeah, it works together, like, because in order to form the house, you also have to form yourselves mm -hmm. in that, as individuals and then as community together. And then that reflects itself in the work that you do in the house, or how you approach the work in the house. Right. 
I want to go back to what you said about like categorizing because that's something that it, I mean, for me. So I intentionally chose Catholic worker houses that had ca uh, Catholic spirituality as a base. Mm -hmm. That was a choice, and I mean, Mary, you and I have said at round tables where we talked about you know prayer life and this and that. And I remember somebody coming up and being like. Oh my God! You have to go to prayer. And I remember, like Mary and I were like, "It's not about have to, like we want to." Like, it, you know, like, it was just like kind of a funny. You know what I mean, like you felt like all weird, like, uh, "Yeah, I want to go to prayer at seven in the morning. That's a choice. Like it's not like I have to go to prayer." And I think that so it's interesting because we, I think there there might be some differences in terms of formation, dependent upon how the charism of the house is. So in, in a situation where like we have, I mean the houses, that, the two Catholic worker houses that I lived in, both of them had morning daily prayer. Hmm. And that was huge for me because that's what I wanted. I wanted a community based on prayer, life, and faith. Because other, because here's, here, I mean I'm gonna come back to brokenness. Oh, we're always gonna suck. I mean, that, that, no offense, y'all are always gonna suck. You're all going to always let me down. I'm going to let you down because it's just part of our human condition. I mean, that's just kind of the truth of it. I'm not saying like in all cases at all times. I'm just saying at some point, it's just a reality. But, but, that's, but that doesn't mean that we don't try to live in community with each other. And that doesn't mean that we don't have this common word. To me, based on this foundation of our faith, and I think the aims and means especially, um, I mean, I read the aims and means through the lens of my faith. And so, so when I look at that, and I have a sense of, you know, when, when the, the, I think for me, like, it's like, okay, I always had, it, as a young child in reading scripture, had a very fundamental understanding of what I thought Jesus was calling us to, and I didn't necessarily see the church I belonged to uh, having any leadership in that. So for years I just wandered around aimlessly. I found in a Christian community finally a place that took Jesus seriously. I found within the Catholic worker movement a place where I could actually live out my faith on a day-to-day -day basis with support of other people. And I think that, so there is an element of if you choose a spiritual base in your community, regardless of whether everybody in your community chooses that same spiritual base, because that was another interesting thing. Because, I mean, I lived at, at Dorothy Day House. We had people who did not share that same base that came and lived as community members. And so then they would choose maybe not to join us at prayer or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, and we just, I don't know. I mean, I, we, just did, we just lived with that. Um, but for me, having that foundation of shared faith life made a big difference in terms of how I was able to handle all of the ins and outs and the stresses and the context in which I put things. I'm not really sure what people who do who don't come with a spiritual basis, because that's not me. So like, I, mean, I remember talking to, my, to Chris, my husband, he lived at St. Francis House at a time when they, they don't even like this, they still don't like to call it St. Francis House, they like to just say Francis House. And, and they have a whole, you know, you know, like Chris was like, oh, you know, bike riding and dumpster diving, those were the faith tenants. <laughs> yeah. And I remember, you know, and I remember like kind of talking with him and I was just like, so, like your, your guests did all the cleaning and cooking. Like, what? I, oh, well, workers cooked. Right, when? You know what I mean? Like, I mean, it was just sort of this like, you know what I mean? It was so fascinating to me to see a completely different level of dynamic and that doesn't mean that they're not a Catholic worker house, and it doesn't mean that they're not doing works of mercy, and it doesn't mean that there aren't people there who are doing it with the faith basis, maybe just a little. I mean, I'm just, I'm not trying to judge it. I'm just saying, for me, that would never have been a really good fit, even as much as I love the house and the, and the charism of that house. It just would never have worked for me, because I was made an intentional spiritual community. So I think that's also something that to be, to be, you know what I mean, to kind of look at. Um, and I don't know if that's, if that, I don't know that that has to do with age. Because I, I know people who are young people who are like hungry for that. And I know older people. And I know people like kind of, I'm in, I think I'm in the middle. I think I'm older. You're young. Than, You're young. I'm young. Yeah. I'm getting more. So, but does that make sense? I mean, I think that does, I think that is a good question to ask. Because I do think that that makes a bigger difference. Because here's the other thing. I think I'm much more willing in a context of, 
I'm on the spiritual journey with you, and you might be called to have a different like area of, of focus than I am, but I'm willing to like say that that we're still yoked together in our common faith and in our common work that we'll each support each other in that. So like when I if, if, like I don't, I've never been one who was called to like go get arrested in an action necessarily. But that doesn't mean that I'm not happy to send money or other material support to people who are able and willing to feel called to do that. Does that make sense? And I think if that even stretches across like my own, I, w- I mean, like I would look at the larger Catholic worker movement as my community that way. So I think there is formation to me in that, like the larger kind of collective consciousness. What do you, th- Mary? I'm wondering yeah. what you think because you know I just been thinking like you've been through a lot of, you know, being at Winona and like Jim Allaire and all the different configurations and are you old guard? Well, I, um, <laughs> you know, I did just uh, been done a lot of letting go over the years. You know, I've been, there, I've been, you know, around since for 25 years, lived there for 10 years, and then not living there now uh, for some years. And, um, um, you know, certainly a uh, shift like, over the years. We started the Catholic Worker with, you know, a strong Catholic base. And um, it stayed that way for some years, and then it shifted. It shift, has shifted from that. And, um, but there's a, there is definitely a, you know, a, a spirit. A spirit there. Oh, yeah. It's, it's yeah. continuous along yeah. the line of, mm-hmm. of your ministry. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, my role more is just um, I, I live I don't live in the house, but I'm there on Mondays for for uh, prayer and then community meal. And then, so you know, it's still um, a place where I look, look for community and build community. Um, but it probably doesn't feed me as much as it. You know, uh, originally, um, just because of changes and differences. And I, I, I did choose to. Um, I stayed out as a core community member, even though I wasn't living in the house. But I felt, as a founder, that it was um, probably best for me to let go and um, uh, leave the core community because I was just feeling like maybe. My presence, or my history, could, um, get, get in the way of people maybe moving forward and making their own decisions and making their own Catholic work away. So I, I just really pulled away and, and let it go because you know when you're when you're not living there anymore, you're just feeling like. So, maybe I might know too much, but um, it's, it's really, it's really a wonderful place. It's a wonderful community. Um, I may not always see how it's operated or whatever, for sure. But again, as a non-live-in, um, I really feel like you know I can't really authority or say. So. Um, um, I would, um, I was thinking about, you know, the Catholic worker and, 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 you know, I, you know, I read whatever somewhere that, um, she did not mean for it to be an intentional community, it was more a community of need, that it was, mm-hmm. we're all in, you know, a place of need, mm-hmm. so it wasn't, so I don't, I don't think she knew how to, that, that was her focus, and maybe mm-hmm. it was, Were there ways of formation in Winona, or are there, were there? I can't say for sure what 
You're just being on. modest. No. Um, well, you know, I, and it, was, it was frustrating for some people, you know, because my name was so associated with it. So I felt like I had to do some disassociation so that people could find you know, some of their, their own voice. You know. But I don't know that, um, um, how much. I think Rick and Mary Moody kind of had that problem as well with Hope House. You know, they were strongly associated with the house and the view thing. You know, I think it was hard to, I mean, I'm not trying to speak for them and they're not here, but it seemed like that was an issue as well. Mm -hmm. Where are they? Um, <laughs> Esther yeah, had an equestrian thing in northern Wisconsin. So they're there. Those kids. Those kids. kids. Those kids. Those kids. Those kids. Yeah, yeah. So it really can be a struggle to, you know, letting go process and letting people, you know, kind of move in the direction that they because you have here more offered that metaphor of the organism, you know, growing and shifting and evolving, dying in parts. And I think that's important to remember, but it's tough for sure. And finding the balance between, you know, the founder's syndrome of, and, you know, control and then letting go. It's, in, it's interesting that you should bring up that metaphor. So when we talk about health, we think of that health is I think the same root as whole, holistic, holy. I'm reminded that when we talk about health, usually we're talking about sort of systems or bodies that we're a part of, whether we want to respect it or not. That might be um, a city, a culture, that could be our uh, ecological body that we're a part of, the earth, things that we eat, the way we treat our bodies. That's also the family that we come from. Even if we don't like associate with them in the same ideas, they're psychologically that's still there. We're the family that maybe we're going to start. And so one, 